Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We will be covering the process of how to create a general ledger depreciation batch for your fixed asset module. Right, let's get started. So what I have here is a database. We have got a couple of assets that have been created and we now need to take this data information, depreciation information and post that to our general ledger. Right, so firstly, let's just go look at a couple of options here. If I go to one of my assets, um, I've got the asset information there, the asset type, purchase date, and the purchase price. Now, let's just go look at a couple of options. So if I go to my asset types, I've got a range of asset types there, and on our asset types, that's where we specify our book depreciation methods, as well as the depreciation expense account and the accumulated depreciation account, which comes from our general ledger chart of accounts. So in this instance, I'm going to be integrating into a Sage Trend Revolution database. However, do note that the fix as a module allows you to run the application as a complete standalone without having to integrate into any, in any other accounting package. But before we begin with integration, we need to look at a couple of options under our defaults. Under maintenance, I'm going to go to my defaults and we've got an option for integration. So there's three integration options. There's no integration. Where, as I mentioned previously, you can run the application as a complete standalone. You can integrate into Pastel Partner and local integration. Local integration being integrating into Sage 200 Evolution database. Right, so I've said, for example, locate or integrate into a local database. And now I'm going to go to my local integration tab. There's two options here. There's a depreciation journal batch and a transaction journal batch. I'm going to go back one step. And if I go to my defaults, you'll see there's an option that says create transaction GL entries. Now, normally with an asset register, you're going to calculate your depreciation on your assets. However, there may be instances where you may need to perform certain transactions on your assets. And the effects of these transactions need to be posted to your general ledger. A typical example would be, for example, the selling or scrapping of assets. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to create GL entries for those types of transactions. And I'm going to say, OK. And before we continue, we need to go to our general ledger module. I'm going to go to transactions. And I'm going to go to journal batches. And we need to go create specific batches to cater for the posting of our depreciation values, as well as those transactions that occur with the new asset register. So I'm going to open up a new batch, and I'm going to call it, for example, monthly depreciation. Open the batch. And I've got my details there with my batch reference number and information. So I'm going to close the batch for the time being. At the same time, I'm going to go create a new batch specific for those fixed assets transactions. So, for example, right, okay to that. And I've now got my batch open. Right, so I've got a depreciation batch as well as a batch specifically for those asset transactions. Now I'm going to go back to my fixed assets maintenance. I'm going to go back to my defaults. And under integration, I specified local integration. Local integration, I'm now going to be able to specify my depreciation journal batch. So on the drop down, I'm going to pick up my monthly depreciation badge. And then for transactions, I'm going to select the fixed assets transactions badge. Right, so we've got our fixed assets there with all our information. And what would normally happen is you'd really go and view your depreciation reports. In this case, go to reports, book depreciation. And I'm going to go view the report, for example, for that particular period. 
And if I preview that, I'm going to have a breakdown of all my assets together with the purchase date, depreciation start date, the purchase price, and for example, the current year depreciation, current period depreciation, and very importantly, the book value of the assets being the purchase price less the depreciation, total depreciation, giving us the book value. So just check the details there. That's our total depreciation for the period, which is 9,993.42. And at this point, I'm then going to go to my general uh, transactions under fixed assets, so under transactions. We'll see that I've got an option that says GL depreciation batch. So I'm going to go in there. And I'm now going to go generate a batch for that period to be posted to my general ledger. So I'm going to go to generate batch. And very importantly, make a backup before posting the batch. And what you'll notice is that we've got the ability to post depreciation per period. So I'm going to start on that period, which is the period which when my assets were purchased. And I'm going to say generate GL entries up to including that period mentioned. OK. And there we have it. Now, what I have here is I've got my depreciation values per asset type for that period. So as you can see, the total of that depreciation agrees to my depreciation report. So I'm just going to say save the batch. And this point, I can give a reference number, for example, And I can post the batch at this point. So I'm going to take this information into my general ledger, post the batch, put the batch file, and I've got my breakdown there per asset type with the relevant depreciation values for that period. Close. And now, if I then go back to my general ledger, I'm going to go to my journal batches. And as you can see on my monthly depreciation batch, there are some transactions in that batch. If I open the batch, here we have it. There's our transaction date, our reference number being the fixed assets plus the period when the batch was posted, together with a description, as well as the values for the depreciation within that period. Now, it's simply a case of validating the batch. Validation was successful and post and update the batch. Right. So now what happens the next period? It's once again going to fixed assets maintenance. If need be, I could then go, for example, add a new asset. New purchases are made during the period. And I would simply then go back to my reports run my book depreciation in this instance for the subsequent period. I've now got those details together with current year and current period, obviously current year being two months that I've run the depreciation for, and I've got my book value. Close this. And now I'm going to go back to my, gen, uh, my transactions under fixed assets, GL depreciation batch, generate the batch for the new period. And as you can see now, is that the prior periods are no longer available, and I now need to post the depreciation values for the subsequent periods. And say the next period, there we go, say OK. And once again, I've got those depreciation figures for the subsequent period. Simply a case of saying save, inserting a reference number or reference information. And post the badge. One for this time. And if I then go back to my general batches, 
once again, open up the batch, and there we go. There's my information. There's my reference number for the subsequent period with my depreciation values. Validate the batch and post. So as you can see, a really easy way for you to generate depreciation figures from the asset register, create a GL depreciation batch and post those details into a GL general batch, which can then be updated in your general ledger. I do hope this presentation was useful. Thank you so much for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.